on behalf of the department of english this is professor amit bhattacharya welcome you to this new session obviously the pg syllabus of university of gorbongo stipulates that we study five poems of philip arthur larkin if you remember i had started discussing the poems of philip larkin by taking up for discussion wants that was the first poem that we wrote together and it was actually taken from less deceived after that we have read together the explosion the whitson weddings and add grass now however we have come back to another poem from the same volume less deceived if you remember less deceived was published first in 1955 and the poem that we are going to read to be there is charge going charge going along with thought was written in 1954 and published for the first time in less deceived if you remember less deceived is a volume of poems that was published 10 years after the end of the second world war so the post war situation was pers pers uh, persisting and <clears throat> if we actually before reading this poem if we look at the five poems that have been selected for you or study five poems of philip larkin i'm i mean you will see that there is at least some kind of a uh, similarity so far as the tone and tenor of the poems are concerned there is mild boredom disillusionment some kind of pessimism as well but you know there is at the same time sometimes overtly sometimes covertly a mention of and a dwelling upon hope and heritage you know life may be boring life may be illusory meaningless sometimes hostile this world may act to you but at the same time man goes on whether he is bored whether disillusioned he is at least ready to go on he does not chuck in the game doesn't throw in the towel he goes on even fights a losing battle but fights on so these are the things that i would like you to keep in mind before we read charge going now look at the title of this particular poem now if you remember philip larkin has written another poem going going that shows to us how the homogeneity of englishness is actually breaking up being torn asunder presumably presumably by the arrival of the immigrants and all that so going can mean in this context disappearance vanishing so if charge going can mean if you read the poem you will see this 
going to charge then it can also mean charge disappearing becoming less and less relevant with the passage of time now if you see the basic storyline the subject of the poem concerns itself with the visit of a cyclist to a country church a bit non descript maybe of a non descript town that larkin had so fleetingly described in the witcher readings for example this bored cyclist actually sees the charge and enters it and the rest of the poem actually describes what really happens how he responds to the charge at the same time if you read the poem very carefully you will see that larkin is also describing the slow but sure dwindling of charge attendance the slow but sure falling into disuse that the charges are being subjected why why is this so you will see that it is a post second world war poem now sometimes it so happens that whenever a crisis comes we tend to lose our faith in the cherished institutions of our life why is it so because the crisis often show us how pitifully inadequate institutions may be institution like family institution like the nation or 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 the state institution like the religious establishment and all that how they are very inadequate because when men die when countries are torn asunder in times of the breaking of nations our faith in god is terribly shaken most of the times the second world war just as its predecessor the first world war was basically an organized butchery however the second world war meant the death ratio of the combatants and the non combatants the military personnel and the civilians was not that which it was during the second first world war because of the increased use of aeroplanes bombers we'll see that in the second world war the civilian toll death toll casualty was quite high we all know how london was bombed i may refer you back to a poem by dylan thomas whose title if i remember it correctly you will have to check up 
is the refusal to mourn by uh, the death by fire of a child in London. The refusal to mourn the death by fire of a child in London. It actually alludes to the incendiary bombing by the German Air Force. So what I am trying to point out is that family, the charge, everything seemed really inadequate to sustain our faith in them. Especially the failure of the church, the failure of Christianity, the Christian establishment to interfere in the Holocaust that Nazi Germany resorted to meant that there was a backlash against the church, against Christianity. So in some ways, you, you may say that this poem is a post-Christian poem of sorts. At least, at least we can say that it looks forward to some kind of a post-Christian era. Not the era of the second coming that Larkin's disavowed mentor W.B. Yeats had talked about in the second coming. But a kind of a gradual erosion of faith. First, the loss of faith in religion, then even the loss of belief in superstitions. It's an existential universe in which man is left in the large to fend for himself or herself, as the case may be, is the intellectual background of the poem. But then the question comes, is the message of this poem all doom and gloom? We don't think so. Why we don't think so, we will come to in course of our discussion of this poem. So with this kind of an introduction, let us tackle the poem, the text. If you see, this is basically a poem of seven stanzas because I have provided you with the text. You must look at it. This is a poem of seven stanzas. Each stanza consists of nine lines. There is a rhyme scheme. This rhyme scheme is difficult and involved, but it is there. See, repetition, foregrounding, choice of specific vocabulary conducive to image making. And a kind of a studied open-endedness. These are the important literary elements that we come across in this particular poem. Look at the rhyme scheme of the stanzas. Those of you who are interested in rhetoric and prosody, those of you who are interested in stanza forms and all that, those of you who are actually contemplating sitting for the net and set examinations may remember that the nine line stanza as used by Larkin very easily and naturally leads us to think about the Spencerian stanza. That was also a nine line stanza, if you remember. The rhyme scheme there in Spencerian stanza was basically A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C, C. Here, I must tell you about the rhyme scheme of the Spencerian sonnet. Remember it. 
A B A B B C B C C D C D E E If you read Larkin's poem, charge going, you will see that the rhyme scheme of the stanzas, each of the stanzas, is A B A B C A D C D. So elements from the Spenserian stanza. Elements from the Spenserian sonnet stanza division. Everything is slowly but surely used and usurped by Larkin. If we think about the stanzas themselves, how the flowing continuity of thought is kept on by making it colloquial and the language flow by using a constant stream with the help of repetition of rhyme and variation there. A, B, A, B, C, A. So B and A are actually repeated in the second set. A, B, A, then B, C, A. So C is introduced. Again, in the third stanza, a and uh, the sorry third set of the uh, of the individual stanzas, not the third stanza. The third set of the individual stanzas. You know, D C D is introduced. So a new rhyme D is introduced, but the old rhyme of C is retained. So A, B, A, B, C, A, D, C, D is a very complex and involved rhyme scheme. But it helps. It, it, it actually serves a purpose. That of keeping the conversational flow of language going by making it a kind of a an, an uh, internal dialogue. Here, we are reminded of the dramatic monologues of Robert Browning, for example. Sometimes he uses interrogation, sometimes he uses questions. In this, he is indebted to, but at, at the same time, deviant from what Yates was doing. Two or three decades ago, before uh, Larkin. So these are things that we have to understand. Okay, now Shubhasri will start reading the poem. I don't think I will be able to finish the poem in one at one go in one class. So what I will try to do is to go as far forward as I possibly can without overstaying my welcome. Okay, Shubhasri, start with the first stanza. Once I am sure there's nothing going on, I step inside, letting the door third shut. Wait. Another church. Wait, wait. Once I'm sure that there is nothing going on, I get into the church. It's at once ironic and indicative of the mental condition as well as the mentality of the speaker. See, it is a first person narrative. I is used. It's a lyrical poem. Here, 
the larkin persona enters the church very significantly the gender of the persona is not mentioned the persona may be masculine or feminine a male or a female we are not sure and we know don't need to be sure either okay so once i know that there is nothing going on in the church i i enter the church and shut the door behind myself behind my back okay so this third shot this alliterative use of two words is very very interesting why because usually we do not shut the door of a church with violence and because the church is supposed to be full of echoes this forcefully shutting the door may lead to further echoes okay go on another church matting seats and stone and little books sprawlings of flower cut for sunday brownish now some brass and stuff up at the holy end stop this so as the persona enters the church he looks around and finds things that are very common in churches matting seats stone similarly brass and stuff up at the holy end here you know some kind of an irreverent attitude is hinted at he is aware only so much and not more he knows something about the use of churches about the architecture the in- internal architecture of churches and what is kept there but there is a some kind of a flippant tone at least thus far discernible in this form okay so he sees these things and he also sees the sprawling of flowers cut for sunday because sundays there is just like fridays for muslims sundays there is church service in 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 christian churches obviously religious service in christian churches so this much is very very discernible now these flowers were cut for sunday and because he is visiting the church not on sunday or monday but during the week obviously the flowers have lost their freshness and become brownish they are rotting they are drying at least withering so these are things that we need to understand and these withering flowers are indicative of the faith of humanity in religion as well in some ways okay go on the small neat organ and attains musty unignorable silence with brood okay 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 go on brood brood god knows how long wait hatlin wait so what does he see the neat organ some little books and all that and what does he experience he experience profound silence why 
because there are no other worshippers there are no other persons in this church at present and that is why he had entered the church you have to understand or remember but here here just look at the use of words this silence is strange this silence is non ignorable at the same time this silence is musty you know with the adjective musty the thing we associate is not an auditory experience but an olfactory experience so there is kinesthesia mingling of senses because musty is associated with smell there is a musty smell of disuse and damp here however it is associated with silence so a confusion or a careful mingling of senses sense perception is sometimes that larkin is resorting to or the larkin persona is resorting to understood so you know it may be a free rein to his imagination it may also be a manifestation of of his befuddled mind and puzzlement okay uh this silence is important because this silence may mean the absence of devotees worshipers church goers and that is why the church is going going to wreck and ruin at one time it may be rented free to wind and uh, to do rain and ship so this is very very interesting and significant okay after silence brewed god knows how long yes so this silence is being brewed just as wine is brewed you know you remember in uh, ode to a nightingale kids was talking about the wine that was kept underground and tasted and and uh, and and, and removed reminded the speaker of provasal song and sanbant math so it is it has been brewing for how many days nobody knows only god knows so here there is a reference to god but in a in a flippant way not in a very very reverent way but if there are still brownish flower arts if there are flowers indicative of last sunday service the absence of men may not be that long stretched so here the persona's point indication of this long time brewed god knows how long points out that there is an element of confusion in the mind of this particular 
speaker who seems at best an agnostic if not um, an atheist out and out at least an agnostic okay go on hatless i take up my cycle cleats in awkward reverence okay those who use um those who actually um, just as british walkers used to indulge in in the mid 50s in summer during summer holidays you know because there is uh, wind someone's hair may be disabled so if you did not use hat because the hats could be blown off your head by the wind when you were cycling they use cycle uh, cycling clips that would actually keep the hair in its proper place so obviously the speaker who is a cyclist for the first time we have come to understand this takes off his riding clip in awkward reverence so there is a, an element of habit blind habit this reverence is not felt in a way this is imitated because it is supposed to be felt the christian heritage lets the larkin person understand that he is supposed to be reverent in his attitude in church we all know that we take off your hat take off your cap in the presence of ladies in the presence of god in 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 religious establishments and all that now this is something peculiar to christianity because if you think about the sikhs or the muslims well uh, uh the dope is to cover your head and not to one cover it so what actually i i i want to point out is that how larkin takes off the larkin persona takes off his cycling clip in awkward reverence shows how meaningless even this ritual has become okay awkward reverence then after that move forward run my hand around the font from where i stand the roof looks almost new cleaned or restored someone would know i don't stop so he actually handles the font font is basically a stone structure used for baptism in a church after bath boys and girls the the the, the infants are actually baptized they are dipped into the consecrated water and it is supposed to make them christians is the kind of a sacrosanct ablution so what i i am trying to point out that that he is handling the font and what does it uh, do next he looks at the roof of the church he doesn't know whether it is cleaned or restored somebody may know but he doesn't 
and by from the assertion i don't we can very easily deduce that he is not bothering to know either he is not hell bent on knowing come hell or high water he will know no that is not the attitude of the speaker we go on mounting the lectern i peruse a few hectoring hmm. i peruse i peruse i peruse hmm. a few hectoring large scale verses and pronounce here endeth much more loudly than i would mean the equals a snigger uh, yes e equals snigger the equals snigger briefly okay the large kid person na mounts the large podium from which the preacher the 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 the, the person actually preaches now usually in 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 english churches passages and verses from the king james bible were re read during the church services and each each reading was traditionally brought to a close With the utterance of this formal, formulaic phrase, "Here endeth," so it shows that though not strictly a faithful, the Larkin persona is sufficiently familiar with church procedures, church rituals. and so on and so forth but the fact that his attitude is one of studied indifference can very easily under be understood at least this far it is one of studied indifference can be very easily understood by two things by him categorizing the biblical verses as hectoring boastful and by an over loud utterance of the formulaic uh, the, the the end phrase here ended so just as he is taking off his cycling clip was reasonably unsatisfactory so is the case till now have you understood this much yes sir okay go on back at the door i sign the book donate an irish sixpence reflect the place was not worth stopping for with it it's not worth but worth see now he is going away from the church at least physically he is going away from the church he goes to the door <coughs> in his way out he signs the visitors book a common custom and donate something but what does he donate an irish sixpence which was lesser in value than the english sixpence so his contribution to the church is pretty fully negligible it may or may not as oh my god that 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 uh, peculiarly irreverent uh, bollywood film has pointed out 
his contribution to the church is not no very much and he also thinks that the charge was not worthing uh, worth stopping for so he doesn't find anything worshipable or adorable in the charge that he had visited okay have you understood this much we have completed the first two stanzas yes yes sir okay read on the third stanza yet stop i did in fact i often do and always end much at a loss like this so Wonder there is a peculiar peculiar thing here at one time on the one hand the persona is considering the charge not worthy enough to be visited on the other hand we can point out his practice what he has done what has he done and what he usually does he stops at these churches why this is a very very peculiar condition on the one hand he does not believe in god does not seem as uh, seems he does not believe in churches either but yet at the same time he actually visits many churches it may mean the semi unconscious repetition of what others do are you getting my point yes sir okay so considering them these places not worth stopping for and again surprisingly stopping there all the same it may mean again a kind of a formulaic repetition of steps it may also mean a real confusion in fact cut off from his religious moorings metaphysical moorings men are often floundered from one place to one another stumbled from one place to another are you getting my point yes sir okay go on shubhashree wondering what to look for wondering to when churches fall completely out of use what we shall turn them into if we shall keep a few cathedrals chronically on show their parchment plate and peaks in locked cases and let the rest rent free to rain and sheep wait he doesn't know but he speculates all the same as to what will happen to charges when they have left uh, lost the use that they had okay have you understood read this portion again 
when churches fall completely out of use what we shall turn them into if we shall keep a few cathedrals chronically on show their parchment plate and peaks in locked cases and let the rest rent free to rain and sheep you know do, do you understand the two very important processes that science often talks about one sample collection and the second one is sample preservation and then there is also the other extreme leaving or abandoning or neglecting other specimens of the same that are less well formed or less ornate have you understood yes sir okay go on shall we avoid them as unlucky places okay um <clears throat> read these lines again said the last line yeah the last two lines and let the rest rent free to rain and sheep shall just we ever as, just 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 as some of the cathedrals will be treated as specimens just as it is done in museums they may be turned into museums with their parchment plate and pics pics is the container in which uh, the the bread for the eucharist is kept so these are all things from the church paraphernalia the accoutrements okay so when the churches will fall into disuse some of them will be turned into museums for avid onlookers some of them will be abandoned for the rain and the sheep will people avoid these places as unlucky ones that is again another question that the larkin persona has to answer, ask and seek answers for yes let's finish the third stanza shall we avoid them as unlucky unlucky places said so this is the last line of the third stanza yes that is what i wanted to do one point out so there is a kind of a possibility that these places may be avoided as unlucky ones now why is the use of this word unlucky very significant because churches and the principles that the churches stood for have proved terribly pitifully inadequate during the war so he wonders the larkin persona wonders whether this will be considered as unlucky places as a part of the severe backlash against christianity and churches for that matter so till today we have read the first three stanzas of the poem charge going i hope to complete the poem by tomorrow and go on discussing things now if you any one of you have any question you may shoot
is there any does the sprawling of father sir do the sprawling of flowers indicate the uh, lo loss of faith in spirituality see the fact is well you go to a temple there are flower offerings you see any flower will wither will go stale and rot away with the passage of time understood so in a way on one level at least it means only the passage of time but as you have rightly pointed out it can also be read as an indication of the loss of faith just as the flowers have lost their freshness our faith and piety have also lost their intensity and since we are talking about a poem that was written after the first, second world war this possible interpretation does hold good understood yes sir any other question sir i have one so as we see that in this poem there is a tone of anti religiousness uh, and so sir maybe in, in during the world war 2 uh, the the people in, in the, the people of england tried hard to worship god so that they can be saved from the casualty of the war but uh, as they as the witness that uh, the religious uh, faith was of no use in that time so sir uh, here um, sir i'm getting sir. you see you are as Sorry, i forgot the... you you are as confused as one can get yes, sir see the fact is you know yes sir i now i am okay okay go on sir how did uh, the people of england welcome the poem this particular poem uh, that is that seems anti religious to them less deceived was well received but one thing you have to understand that larkin's poetry is a bit like like the other uh, uh, movement poets also this was basically academic this was intellectual elitist so the readership was not very wide you cannot compare the popularity of larkin with the popularity of a blake a wordsworth a keats or a yeats see the intellectual circles in which larkin's poems were read the movement poems were read because that particular circle or the, those particular circles were educated full of educated members or the readers were educated intellectual they actually did not find faults with it so in a way this radicalism this 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 apparent irreverence for religion was not actually decried against but because the readership was narrow the serious implications could not be measured from the reaction of the larger public understood yes sir well if there are no other questions are there any questions so church is a holy place where uh, baptismal works takes place so at the same time it is considered as a uh, unlucky place why sir sondipon this is this is bad either you are not listening to me seriously 
or managing to forget things. The font is there. The font used for baptismal dips is used by the faithful, the Christian faithful. Now the Larkin persona does not count himself or herself among the faithful. Are you getting my point? This much? Yes, sir. Now, we are talking about the post-war, second world war condition. The churches have not fallen down. They have not been destroyed by the passage of time till now. But the faith in them ha has actually dwindled. Larkin is Larkin persona is not in these lines talking about the present. He is talking about a future. If this trend in the gradual decrease in human faith, religious faith is continued. Ultimately, the churches will fall into disuse one by after all, after all. And at that time, he speculates that some of if not us, at least our successors, may avoid such places as unlucky ones. So you, you cannot confuse the time. The fonts are relics of an age of faith. The absence of worshippers is the symbol of present lack of religious fervor and may be token the continuance of this irreverence until such times as churches will be considered as unlucky places. So it's a speculative poem. Larkin does not know. But based on Contemporary trends, he conjectures, he hazards the guess that this may be the ultimate fate of the churches. Here, I may also refer to the Stonehenge. An architectural ruin, archaeological ruin in England that was at one time used for the religious purposes of the pagans before the coming of, the, of Christianity to the British Isles. Just as the Stonehenge in the Christian era has lost its religious significance, Larkin seems to think that churches may also lose their significance in a possibly post-Christian era. Okay. Are there any other questions? Sir? Hello, sir? Yes, go on. Why are you dilly-dally? Sir, we know that the church lost the value at that time uh, or the after post-World War. But this poem, sir, shows us that the narrator is going to the church. So, sir, from this perspective, and that we can say that uh, despite losing religious value, no one can totally or completely exclude religion from one's life. Well, a very good question. In a way, two things are pointed out, and I have already pointed them out. Number one, the fact that even though he considers the charge not worth stopping, uh, 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 stopping for, 
but the fact that he usually does, often does, and he did in this particular instance, <laughs> points out that he cannot totally ignore religion. This is number one. This is maybe a possible interpretation, but there is also the deadening repetitiveness of habit. Sometimes one persists in repeating something by habit without conviction, but in a mechanical sort of way. Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. Both these interpretations may be valid. Of course, I will be able to answer your question in a fuller way when we complete this poem. I hope you will be there with us at that time, maybe tomorrow, if everything goes well. Any other okay. question? Thank you. Well, if there are none, Shamim may remove me from the class.